Hello, 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 everyone. It's me, Rebel Trader, with Take the Initiative. I'm going to be explaining my uh, setup that I use to stream the Portland 1K. Uh, hopefully, go over some lessons learned and maybe teach you guys something about streaming. So, just some some background for me. I have a background in um, live theater, <laughs> so uh, including like live broadcast theater during the 2020 era. So, uh, that's that's my experience <laughs> and. Um, you know, it translates a bit over to, uh, to streaming games, but, uh, yeah. So I'll explain, here's basically like what the setup looked like at the table. So you have like the, the two players here, and then I had this, technically it's a microphone stand, uh, but you can use it to put, you can put cameras on it as well. I haven't put the camera on it today just because I don't want to. <laughs> and I also, I, I, so I had the camera at the table and I had the microphone at the table also. This is a Zoom H1N audio recorder. Uh, it also has a built-in speaker, which is going to come up later. Um, but I basically like duct taped it to the, <laughs> to the top of the stand. Um, really like any stand will do. This is like kind of precarious because like the, the weight is sort of tilted one way and you might expect it to fall over, but we never had any issues with that. You can balance it. Uh, you can also get like better stands that will like basically arch over the whole table and be very stable. And I also had this um, little wireless keyboard here. This is to allow the players to send signals to the computer, uh, which is nice. I basically had like things programmed in it to change scenes in, in OBS and in uh, to start a timer. So I, I, I'll show you how that uh, works later. But basically, these three things all plugged in together into this uh, little USB bus, uh, the receiver for the keyboard. By the way, if you're doing this in like a super crowded convention, like it might be to your advantage to use a wired keyboard instead of a wireless one, but uh, we weren't too crowded, so, and it, it'll probably be fine anyway. So then I just plug the camera, uh, the microphone, and this into the this little USB bus. And during Swiss, I had my uh, laptop right next to the table, just facing away from the players because it happened to work that way. Uh, but for the top cut, I wanted to do commentary, so I plugged it into this, which is basically just a 30-foot USB cable that goes over to my computer. Um, we went like around the corner, but there was a big wall, so the, the players couldn't hear us. Or Well, it was only me doing commentary, but um, yeah. So you, you generally want to make sure that the players can't hear the commentary, and generally a big wall combined with the ambient noise from... Uh, being in a game store, like that, I'll, I'll do that. Uh, a note on the long USB cable. Uh, this is a specific kind of thing. It is called an active repeater cable, which uh, basically, so normally the USB cables will stop working after about 10 feet in length. Um, I forget what the exact number is, but uh, you can Google it. But you, you um, Basically, the, the USB cables will, will not work because uh, it's just a limitation of the technology. But if you have little uh, electronics that are you know constantly boosting the signal uh, inside the cable, then it can work, and it can go like pretty long. So this is like this is one that goes 30 feet. Uh, I would be careful with these. Um, uh, I've I so I own two of these, and I've tried like plugging them into each other, and it usually doesn't work out. Um, so if you can just get away with using one, that's great. Uh, if you need to go like really, really long distances, I would recommend not using USB extensions and, and I would recommend getting um, adapters for Cat5 cable to USB. So then, cause you can run Cat5 like really, really long. I think I think theoretically there is a maximum, but it's really, really, it's, it's much further in USB. And then also if you have a fancy camera, you're gonna have to run an HDMI cable as well, probably. Uh, this camera is USB but uh, not all of them are. Um, so yeah, just, just be careful. And HDMI is gonna run into similar cable length limitations. Um, so Google, Google those uh, and you can find like charts. So yeah, so basically uh, the 30 foot cable goes over to my laptop and on my laptop I had plugged into it this, uh, the cable there and also this USB audio interface. And I have uh, here this microphone plugged into the interface. And then you just need like some sort of stand to put the microphone on. This is uh, an e Audio Technica AT2020, which works really well for me because it rejects background noise. And that's especially useful <laughs> for gaming because if you're in the middle of a game store and there are people across 
uh, you know, for where I was sitting, there was a table right across from me that was playing board games. And so this was able to just reject that noise. Uh, the cheaper microphones don't usually do that, but you, you can get a cheaper microphone that does do this. Uh, all right. So that was basically the hardware part of it. Um, sorry, my phone like stopped recording in the middle of it, but we were basically done going through the hardware stuff. So again, we have the camera and the mic at the table and the keyboard. Those all go into a USB bus, which runs to a 30 foot active repeater cable, which connects to my laptop. And then next to the laptop is the, uh, focus right audio interface and the microphone that I use for commentary. Uh, so then this is like the software side of it. And so I use two pieces of software to make this work. It's OBS and voice meter. So voice meter is a bit more complicated. It handles all the audio stuff and it's, it's not strictly necessary, but I use it because I like it. So OBS, I mean, I'm going to assume you're familiar with OBS because basically everyone that's doing live streaming is, um, if you're not go online and, and find some tutorials on it, this is not it, but basically, um, I have a bunch of these other sources that I use for other things, but the two main ones that I use here were VCAP, which is just video capture and the waiting screen. So, uh, this basically just, I have the camera here and I have a timer. Uh, the timer is normally it's 55, but for top cut, we did 75 minutes. So I have it set up here. There is a hotkey set up with the, which is why we use the, um, the keyboard at the table to start this timer. I don't have it set up right now, but, uh, in principle, you can set that up to have a hotkey for the timer that I just, I had a piece of paper right next to the keyboard, which told the players <laughs> what the command was. And I also made sure to tell them in person before the game, what it was. Um, and I also had hot keys to go to the waiting screen and the game screen. So the waiting screen looks like this. And you might've heard that, uh, at the table, the <laughs> microphone says the name of the screen when it goes to. So if it says game screen, when I go here, waiting screen, when I go here, uh, but you don't hear that in the stream. That's actually only it's set to monitor only. And I'll, we'll get to what that means in, in a second, but, um, yeah. So basically here I had, I have music here going. Um, this is just, uh, it's like three or four songs that I just put in one wave file that I have set to loop and you can just go in here and just click loop, um, to make that happen. So here I just have the, the, my logo, the logo of the store, and this, this was the camera, but I, now it's just a generic blank thing. And then this is, uh, just the background that I used. Uh, it is literally just an AI generated image of a castle. <laughs> it, it, it looks kind of cool. Um, so, and then I also have the camera here and the camera here is the same source as the camera over here or sorry. Well, the cameras are the same, but the, the timer is also the same. So that whenever you switch to, uh, the next, the other screen, the, the, um, they're the same and you can do that in OBS if you don't know how, like, so I, the camera is a text source. So you just go here and instead of clicking create new, you just click add existing and you can add anything from any of your scenes. That's how, that's how I make sure that these are the same The camera is the same and the text is the same over here. So, uh, yeah, like, um, I would put more design work <laughs> into the waiting screen, uh, if I had more time, but I just, at the, I just did not have a ton of time, uh, to, to come up with something for the, the stream. So it looks kind of basic, but it has everything that you need. Uh, in the future, I would probably add like an indication of what round it is. And I'd probably add some way to increment that from the table. Um, but yeah, so next I'm going to get into voice meter, which is a bit more complicated. <laughs> uh, if you've never used this before, basically what it is, is uh, a virtual sound mixer, which people that have a background in live sound like me, like this makes sense to them. So, uh, basically you have here are five different hardware inputs and three different virtual inputs, and then five uh, hardware outputs and three virtual outputs, uh, which is kind of confusing. But basically, uh, just think like, so a hardware input is just like any physical audio device that you're getting signal from. So this right now is the input from the Focusrite box, which is just the microphone that I'm talking to you in right now. And then this thing over here, the Zoom, is just the microphone at the table. 
Um, the other ones aren't being used for anything right now. So they're just blank. Um, and so the, the virtual ones, uh, typically like I have these set up to when I'm streaming TTS for the, this first one, the system one to be just the system sounds from my computer, which is usually the TTS output noise. Um, like the noise of the shuffling cards and, and stuff, uh, and the pings. And the comms is just um, Discord. And so, like, the way you would set this up is once you download Voice Meter, um, uh, there will be things on your computer that whenever you're in a place where you would select an audio output, normally you would just select, like, whatever your headphones you're using. You can select uh, Voice Meter, VAIO, um, uh, 1, 2, or 3. And that corresponds here, 1, 2, or 3. And so then in OBS, uh, the third channel is I use for the OBS monitoring. So to set that up in, you go in settings to, I think it's an audio. Um, yeah, advanced, you click the monitoring device. So I just have this set up to be um, v, uh, virtual audio input output three. Uh, that's what that stands for. And so now um, to get something to be monitor only, you would go here to the advanced audio properties. And so notice how for the main microphone stuff and for this music, I just have it as monitor off. But for this, I have monitor only. Uh, you can also have a monitor and output, but I have it monitor only. For, and this is the waiting screen, just the media clip that says is a recording of myself saying waiting screen, <laughs> which you probably were hearing from over there. Uh, so now this media clip will play whenever the scene gets switched to. Uh, it won't repeat because I, I have the loop thing. Uh, or Oh, no. Uh, the, uh, I have it unchecked here, so it won't loop, um, but it'll just play once when you switch to the scene, and it won't play to the stream. It'll only play to the monitor, and the monitor, remember, is this channel here, and so this channel here, I can set the outputs for it. <laughs> uh, so the outputs I have set are, A2 is just like my headphones right here from the, um, the audio box. A1 I have is like the my laptop speakers. And A3 is the zoom at the table. So <laughs> if I have it on A3, then uh, the players will hear it at the table. The stream won't hear it. I can also set it up so that I hear it also, but I can also just set it up so I don't hear it. Um, and then for the my, 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 my microphone, I have it set up to just be one. And so I've, I've, that's just because I have my OBS con configured so that mic aux one is the virtual output one, mic aux two is virtual output two, uh, three is virtual output three. Um, and I can show you how to do that here, I think. Is it? Oh, yeah, 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 here. So um, uh, these are just the audio devices in, um, uh, in OBS, and I just have it set up so that it's the the voice meter outputs. Uh, the B1 is the normal outputs. B2 is the called the aux output, and this is a VAIO3 um, output. So um, normally, like I, I I use channel three for the system sounds and channel two for the uh, Discord comms, but that's like not super relevant here. I'm not obviously sending the monitor back into OBS um, just because there's no reason to. Uh, and then this, so for the um, the Zoom, uh, normally, like, during the stream, I just had it set up to my headphones so that I was listening to it, but the stream wasn't. You could theoretically send it to both or even just to the stream, and I would probably just use B2 here for that. Uh, whoa. Okay, uh, so I think when I when I clicked that on, you guys probably started hearing the signal because I had it set up in OBS so, so that you would. Uh, <laughs> so sorry about that. Um, but so yeah, you can set it up to to do that. Um, I didn't do that during the stream because I uh, it would have been too much of a headache to make sure that they were balanced with each other. Um, but in the future, that's something that I would consider doing. It, it's kind of nice to have an ambience of the, the players at the table and the commentator going at the same time. So, uh, yeah, but I didn't do that. But it is technologically possible to do. And then the cool thing that I can do is so I can set up uh, to listen to myself uh, while <laughs> recording just so I'm monitoring my levels. And I usually do that during the stream. 
uh, but you don't need to do that. And for some people, it might you might not be used to hearing yourself, so you might not want to do that. But I can also set this to output to A3, which remember, A3 is the, um, the zoom at the table. And you can check that setting up here, which is just, this is hardware output A3, and it says, you know, the headphone zoom in H and F series. And that was just the name of the device. So I can set this up to A3, and if I do that, I'll be able to talk to the players. So I don't know if you can hear that over there, uh, but my voice is going to the table. And so I can turn that off. And remember, I can hear what the players are saying so that we can talk to each other from a distance without me having to physically get up and go talk to them, which was nice. I used that a couple times during the stream to like check on people's base health because they weren't keeping track of it on screen and we had lost count. Um, I also use it to, you know, tell them like, Hey, I'm ready to go on the stream. So go ahead and start whenever. So that's, <laughs> that's how to use, um, voice meter to do some advanced audio stuff for streaming. Uh, but yeah, uh, thanks for tuning in and I, I hope you learned something from this. Uh, and let me know what, uh, what techniques you use for streaming, uh, unlimited and we can all grow together as content creators. All right. Thanks for tuning in. Signing off.